Hello, I want to show you this drawing of a wild goat in the mountains. It was done with charcoal and I'm going to do a narrated video and talk a little bit about things like drawing rocks and fur and the overall composition of the drawing. Now that I look back at it, I think that the composition is mostly fine, but maybe I could have made the goat just a little bit bigger and move it just a little bit to the right, maybe like a half an inch or so more to the center, but it's fine as it is. Now let's have a look at the video and talk a little bit about the drawing process. I first have to plan my composition. I'm going to have some slopes and some rocks in the foreground. One slope will be here and I'm going to have another slope around here and then I'm going to have some mountains in the background but these lines are going to disappear eventually when I go over them with charcoal it's just that I'm doing this to give myself a rough idea uh, where everything's going to be now I'm not going to do the sketch of the goat just yet because now as you can see I'm putting down some charcoal powder and I like to create this charcoal powder by sharpening uh, one of my woodless charcoal pencils so I'm just gonna lay down a little bit of that powder and spread it a little bit with the brush Like I said, I'm going to do the sketch of the goat a little bit later because if I did it now, it would be covered with charcoal. So I'm going to do that a little bit later. You'll notice that I made these two areas in the lower part of the paper a little bit darker. That's where the slopes will be in the foreground. Now I'm using vine charcoal to cover the rest of the paper and vine charcoal is a lot lighter and it can be blended and moved more easily and lifted up more easily as well so uh, this area is going to be a lot lighter and that's why I first used charcoal powder on these two uh, areas at the bottom because I want I want them to remain darker. This looks like a mess now, but trust me, I know what I'm doing. Or at least I think I do. By the way, I'm using a paper towel now to blend this. And as you can see, it's becoming really smooth and a lot lighter than it, than it seemed initially. So that's going to be my mid-tone, sort of, and then I'm going to draw some other shapes on it. Now, again, I'm using a vine charcoal stick to draw some shapes of mountains in the background. I'm just drawing some mountain tops and I'm adding in some of these darker areas because I want to vary I want to vary the shapes and the amount of value um, just to make the background a little bit more interesting but I'm gonna make it fairly smooth I don't want too much detail or contrast in the background just just a tiny bit so you can see that I'm blending that with a soft synthetic brush which doesn't really bury the charcoal into the grain of the paper so it can be moved more easily. I want it that way because I want it to be a little bit lighter and I want it to be I want to be able to lift it up easily when I need to. 
So that's the thing about line charcoal, it can be moved very easily. Unlike the darker compressed charcoal from my woodless charcoal pencils. Uh, you can see that I'm adding another ridge, mountain ridge, or another row of mountains in the background. This one will be a little bit lighter because it's further away into the, in the in the distance. So I'm going to use a brush to uh, refine the edges a little bit, make these mountain tops stand out a little bit more against the background. That's good enough for now, maybe I'll modify the shape a little bit later. And I'm also using a large brush to blend everything and make it smoother. Like I said, I can use my shorter bristle brush to just go over these mountain tops a little bit to add a little more value to these darker shadow sides of the mountains and maybe clean up the edge a little bit but I don't want the edge to be too clean because these are in the distance so uh, I want everything to be a little bit softer and blurrier uh, down there again I'm using some vine charcoal and adding in some random darker areas to make the background a little more interesting I want the, the right side of these hills and mountains to be darker because my imagined light source is coming more from the left. That's how I decided. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna do the sketch of uh, this goat. And I'm going to use vine charcoal for sketching because I'm not sure how uh, how well the graphite pencil would work and the uh, vine charcoal will be fine I can easily lift it up or erase it so I'm just gonna sketch the goat now I know that some professional artists, educated artists, would probably recommend a slightly different approach, uh, but I'm starting from the goat's butt, and I'm planning to stick to this approach. So first I'm going to draw the body. And these are going to be the legs. And then I'm going to move move higher up to the neck and the head. So this is going to be one of the front legs and these are the hind legs. Uh, they won't be entirely uh, visible because they will be partly obscured by the rocks in front and this uh, this is the neck here so this is an alpine wild goat it's going to have nice long horns but I'm going to get to that in a minute the sketch is coming along nicely. Like I said, first I wanted to do the background because if I did the sketch first, it would disappear. But now that I've d I've done the background, I can I can do this sketch with a vine charcoal stick. And this vine charcoal sketch can be 
removed or erased or modified just as easily as a, as a graphite pencil sketch. So these are the horns bending slightly backward. Um, I think I'm I think I'm gonna have a nice amount of contrast there uh, around the horns. I hope that my composition is gonna work so far. It's looking good. That's probably good enough for now. I'm just gonna make some suggestions of of some of these rocks in the foreground uh, th that are going to be obscuring the goat's legs. I'm just going to put down some rocks here, but I can work on their shape a little bit later. I just need to give myself a rough idea about where they're going to be. So now I'm, I'm going to use my woodless charcoal pencil to continue with the drawing. This is a medium charcoal pencil, which means that it's not very soft, it's not hard, but it's not very soft either. It's something in between. And it's a woodless charcoal pencil, which means that there's a lot of charcoal in it and it can be sharpened very easily without much breakage. Again I'm starting with a butt and I'm gonna first draw the hind legs hind legs in the rear and the abdomen and then proceed from there. Um, I'm gonna need to draw some fur and I'm going to stick to the, the usual basic rules when drawing fur but we'll get to that in a minute again here in front of those legs there will be some rocks I'm just making some suggestions of darker areas and some irregular shapes of those rocks I have no need to commit to anything right now. I can just modify all of that a little bit later. I don't have a reference photo, so I can just I can just improvise, I guess. So this is the other hind leg. I made the area above those rocks just a little bit darker because I want the tops, the top part of those rocks to be a little bit lighter to stand out against the background. So the key with rocks is to have enough contrast and to have these sharp um, irregular shapes with a lot of clean edges. And also there will be this slope in the background. I'm going to have to vary the amount of value there as well to make it just a little bit more interesting and to create an illusion of detail there. Now uh, I'm starting to draw the fur on the goat's back and the abdomen. And I've already talked about uh, how to draw fur in many of my previous videos. The thing is that you have to have a reasonably sharp pencil and you have to be patient because you have to stick to two basic rules first. Um, the length of your stroke has to match the length of the fur on the animal. So. <clears throat> If the fur is a little bit shorter in 
at that part of the body that you're drawing at the moment you have to make your stroke shorter if the fur is longer you make your strokes longer and the other thing is that you have to pay attention to the direction in which the hair grows or flows and you have to emulate that as well draw or make your strokes in that direction so you can see that I'm making a whole bunch of very small short strokes and trying to imitate the appearance and the texture of the goat's fur but the thing is that I'm going to be blending that a little bit later and that's going to give it a little more uh, volume and value now as you can see I'm just scribbling a little bit uh, playing around with these rocks here uh, just scribbling and trying to see if if some shapes will present themselves to me and maybe I can make it maybe I can recognize some shapes that I like and create some nice looking rocks so I'm just sort of scribbling sketching try and see whether I can come up with something I like that's one of the things when working with charcoal there are a lot of these happy accidents as Bob Ross would call them these are far more frequent uh, with a medium such as charcoal but the thing about happy accidents is that you also have to be able to recognize them and to, to be able to recognize certain shapes that you can use to create something so it takes a little bit of experience as well as you can see I'm working on the fur on the belly and here on the shoulders some of the areas are going to be darker some of them are going to be lighter and depending on whether they're facing the light source or facing away from it and this lower portion of the belly obviously will be a lot darker because it's uh, away from the light source as well as the hind legs which are totally in the shadow so they're a lot darker So now I'm moving on to the shoulders and the chest and the area around the neck. Making my strokes just a little bit longer here. And this this is these are the front legs. I'm gonna make the lower part of the leg a little bit darker. And then the upper part above the knee a little bit lighter because it's getting more light. You always have to sort of think about um, if my light source is here, where, which of these areas will be lighter, which of them will be darker. And as long as you can stay consistent with that, and as long as you can create those contrasts, uh, you will create a realistic looking value, or sh a realistic looking drawing, a realistic looking image and like I said I'm thinking my light source is more to the left and slightly uh, behind it's kind of difficult to explain but the important thing is that when you're drawing you have you have an idea in your head where the, where your light source will be and you just stick to it so I'm working on the head and adding some details to it the nostrils the mouth and the hair here will be very short the eyes will be somewhere around here pupil I'm 
just making some initial initial strokes um, trying to suggest the shape of the head before I move on to these to these horns this area here again will be a little bit darker and the legs also you can see that now it's really starting to look like a wild goat and it's starting to take shape now I'm using one of my brushes to blend that fur and you can see the effect that it's having it's softening these strokes but they are still there they will remain visible although a little little bit less conspicuous and a little more bl blended in a little bit softer which is what I wanted to accomplish I wouldn't be able to do that if I were using a totillion because the totillion would completely remove these strokes and I would ruin my texture that I worked so hard to create but the brush allows me to preserve these lines and to preserve that uh, texture and the appearance of the fur that I worked hard to create and also I know that it, all of it, it looks a little bit darker now but I am going to draw some highlights there and uh, create some of that contrast that I initially had so it's fine and now you can see that I've moved on to the horns they're very large and impressive and curved backwards and they have these uh, wide uh, protruded rings I guess So I'm going to add some more detail to them a little bit later, but I also have to finish the work on the fur. And I'm also fidgeting a little bit with, the, with these rocks in the foreground, trying to decide whether I like their shape and whether I have enough contrast and whether the amount of value is going to be enough. And once I finish with that I'm going to be drawing highlights there as well because uh, the upper portions portions of these rocks which are facing upwards are naturally going to be lighter because they're facing the light source and the light is normally coming from the above and from the left in my case so you can see me using my pencil eraser to uh, make some of these areas lighter and increase that contrast to make these rocks stand out a little bit more to make them look a little more jagged and realistic now I'm varying the amount of value in the background so that this slope behind the goat would look a little more interesting trying to create an illusion of detail there and blending that with a brush not too happy with the way that it looks right now because I feel like the slope should be um, either reaching or overlapping with the other slope on the right but we'll see we'll see some of these darker areas and the lighter ones on top with my pencil eraser pencil eraser has to be sharpened occasionally so that it continues to remove charcoal and lift it up because if it gets dirty then it just makes everything messier and it's and it basically blends rather than erases I also need to clean up these edges a little bit because I don't want 
little blurry there in the foreground so I want a clean edge so that it's clear uh, where the rock in the foreground ends and where the goat begins. And I'm also uh, using the charcoal pencil to add a little bit more of this texture on top which I'm not going to be blending, I'm just going to leave it like that, I'm just going to leave that texture a little bit to make it more interesting, again, trying to create more detail, or at least the illusion of detail. suggestions of darker shapes in the background but I'm kind of experimenting at this point and I'm not really sure what it's gonna look like I softened everything a little bit and you can see that I occasionally use a paper towel to lift up some of the charcoal. This is especially easy with vine charcoal and I use my paper towel instead of an eraser to lift up some of these areas um, in the background to make these mountains in the back a little bit more interesting. I mostly used a paper towel but where I needed to lift up a little bit more I used a kneaded eraser. And now you can see uh, that I've improved the shape uh, of those mountains in the back and you can see some suggestions of uh, lighter sides and shadow sides and they seem like they have some shape so that's looking good so here I decided to extend this slope a little bit more to the center to the middle Now I'm going to make some darker areas here in this right side of the slope on the right. And I used vine charcoal again. I'm using a little bit harder brush to push that in a little bit more. But I can still lift it off a little bit with a paper towel to create some of these lighter areas and now I'm using a pencil eraser uh, to create to draw some of these really light areas, light portions which are sunlit which are facing the light source directly I'm going to leave that as it is for now, but I'm just going to use my vine charcoal here in the middle a little bit to add, add a few more darker areas to make this middle portion of my drawing just a little bit more interesting. Because I think at this point I realized that the goat should have been moved just a little bit more to the center or just a little bit bigger, I'm not sure, I feel like I have a lot of empty space here in the middle, so I'm just gonna add a few darker areas to make that part of my drawing a little more interesting, to add some detail there. But it has to be very light and it has to be very soft, just a few suggestions of those distant mountain ridges because I don't want it to be too distracting. And now I'm moving on to the horns which are complex because they consist of these um, ring-like shapes or corrugations. So trying to imitate that rough surface of those horns and <coughs> I'm 
Now I'm blending that a little bit, but like I said, as usual, some of the lines will remain. This area here needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm adding a little more value there, trying not to ruin the texture I created too much. But I'm going to use my pencil eraser to draw highlights in between these lines, so it's not a problem. This area here needs to be lighter because it's facing the light source. And I'm trying to clean it up as much as possible. But I'm going to be adding the highlights on the ears and the neck as well to stay consistent with my light source and here on top of the horns as well um, I'm using a black colored pencil for some of the detail where I feel like I can't get enough precision there's a large portion of the goat here that still that I still haven't worked on I still need to cover all of these or all of this with those short strokes to imitate the fur basically do the same thing that I did uh, with with the part on the left with the back and the belly except that I'm probably going to make this area just a little bit lighter but we'll see and like I said to stay consistent with my light source I need to make these areas around the ears and the neck a little bit lighter and now you can see that I'm also adding some more highlights around the shoulders and on the body because while I was using my brush to soften the texture of that fur I lost some of the contrast so you can always go back in with an eraser to to create more contrast Also, you'll probably see that my lighting varies as does the quality of my video. I'm sorry about that, but some of it was uh, done in under daylight and some of it under artificial light. So the light may be changing a little bit, but I think that most of it is, uh, is of decent quality nowadays, especially considering what cheap equipment I'm using. I'm working around the area uh, around the head, trying to get a little more contrast there so that my highlights can stand out a little more. And some of these small hairs on the ears I can occasionally resharpen my pencil eraser and create a better tip so that it so that it can create nicer finer lines but it doesn't just get dull it also gets dirty it picks up some of the charcoal so I occasionally have to clean it up and, or resharpen it that's the way it is when, when you're working from dark to light. You, with charcoal you have to erase, obviously, and that can sometimes be a little bit tricky. 
I've always found that drawing these highlights with charcoal somehow seemed to work a little bit better than with graphite, uh, which it shouldn't be so because graphite is relatively easy to erase, but the thing is that because graphite is a lubricant, sometimes it tends to make erasing very difficult. Plus another advantage of charcoal is that because it's so dark, when you try to draw a highlight you immediately get a lot of contrast, so the highlight appears very light, almost white, even though it's not, not even close to being white. But I guess with both graphite and charcoal it depends on how you used your pencil and uh, whether a lot of graphite or charcoal is buried into the grain of the paper and that'll make, uh, make it easier or more difficult for you to remove it and draw the highlights. The neck is mostly done, the neck portion, and now I'm doing the same thing which I did uh, with the rest of the goat's body and softening that a little bit with a brush. And now I'm moving on to the head. Like I said, I need to try to make sure that my strokes match the length of the fur. And here, um, on the head, the hair is really, really short, so I'm trying to match that with my strokes and making them super short and um, almost scribbling a little bit, trying to create a grainy, almost dot-like texture. And I'm using a finer tip brush to blend that in. Right now it looks a little bit uh, dull and greyish, but don't worry, I'm just going to do the same thing again with my pencil eraser, go back in, draw some lighter areas on the head and make the head more interesting and give it more shape by using value contrast. The eye also looks pretty good. So these highlights are necessary so that you can show the shape of the animal so that you can show uh, the transition between different parts of the body. Sometimes you need a clean edge, sometimes you need a softer transition. The rocks in the foreground are also looking pretty good. That's sort of what I wanted to achieve. I need to have more detail on them than on the on those slope, slopes in the background. And every, everything will be less detailed with less contrast as you look further into the distance. Now I'm working on the other horn, adding more of these irregular shapes and. Uh, texture. And like I said, I, occasionally I'm using uh, colored pencil, black colored pencil if I feel like I uh, can't get the detail to look right. Because some of it requires very fine lines. I even used a little bit of white chalk here and there, but I didn't really need, really need it that much. Like I said, I mostly use, I, like I said in some of my previous videos, I, uh, I mostly use white charcoal and white chalk for blending rather than drawing highlights. I prefer to draw my highlights either by uh, reserving the white space or by r removing charcoal with erasers. I'm working on this ridge or slope to, to the right and adding some more detail to it, some more contrast. The drawing is now almost done but I feel like I need some more darker values here. So I'm gonna grab a wordless charcoal pencil and just 
scribble here a little bit to lay down some some of that dark charcoal so that my drawing is a little more balanced I, I want some darker areas here as well so that it sort of matches uh, the left side of the drawing and I don't want the edges to be too clean there because it's in the distance and it's kind of blurry I want the focus to be on the goat and the, those rocks in the foreground. Initially I wanted to sign with a pencil eraser but I decided I want a darker signature, black signature with a charcoal pencil, again for more balance because I like detail there. And now I'm removing the tape I think the key is to be careful and to keep your fingers close and to try to sort of pull away towards the edge and away from the center of the drawing so that you don't damage it. I'm going to do the rest uh, in the same manner. If occasionally you lift up a little bit of paper, that's fine, it's not going to be a great amount of damage. And now <clears throat> the drawing is done and I've sprayed it with a fixative. This is what it looks like. If you like this drawing, please give me a like, subscribe, watch my other videos, every like and every comment means a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.